Good question about um, the Scorchers. I mean, they're definitely the standout team of the competition and they quite rightly deserve to be there, I think. Right across the park, batting and bowling, fielding, um, you know, they're the team to beat. And I think, you know, 50 runs was a fair reflection of how much ahead of us they are in the competition. In saying that T20 can be quite a fickle game and, you know, in the big games we do have a pretty good record against them. Um, however, that's, you know, we've got a big game against the Strikers who are in red hot form. They've only gotten stronger with the likes of Head and Carey coming into their mix. Um, good mix with Siddle and uh, Farwad Armour with experience and, you know, young kids like Kelly on the way up. So, yeah, each game, we certainly don't take any game for granted and, you know, we've got a healthy respect for all our opposition. So, you know, Saturday, uh, tomorrow night's game is going to be just as tough as any we've played. You mentioned Head and Carey coming back in and life's all about timing and sports the same thing. <laughs> Abs yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're world-class players. They've shown that. Uh, both of them have had great summers for Australia. So, yeah, they're, they, they're only becoming bolstered. And, um, you know, it's a term that a lot of teams like to use in the competition, momentum and whatever in T20 cricket. And they've certainly got the win behind their back. So um, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be really tough. We do have a bit of that home ground advantage of conditions, which a lot of us know really, really well here at the SCG. Um, you know, we've got the likes of Nathan Lyon, who I think we haven't seen the best out of just yet. And I think on an SCG wicket that looks like it'll be a pretty decent sized ground and a lot of their lefties, I think it's quite a good matchup. I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you were 4th rate last time you were here. So do you sort of look at those things and go, right, we might not have been too, too crash hot last time out, but this is where we know how to win? Yeah, I think, um, I think in a game of T20, you're just looking for those little one percenters that sort of lean the game in your favour. And I think playing at home in conditions that are favourable to your team that you know is, um, something that can't be underestimated. Um, I've certainly had days here where I've gone none for 40 off three overs as well. So you step into a new contest um, and it's about proving yourself again every time you walk out there. So, um, you know, the same four overs that might get you four for 18 could be, you know, easily none for 50 against a different opposition. Um, it's a different style of team that we're up against. Um, a lot more left and right handers. I think against the Thunder, I, I got, well, I only bowled against right handers, which suits the ball going away. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, a tough contest and they are very, very good players of spin. How much of an advantage do you think Adelaide will feel they have given their run of form compared to yours going there? Yeah, they'll come in um, full of confidence. You know, they're, not, they, you know they're, they're very successful at home. Um, you know, and without the likes of Rashid, you think they'd go backwards, but if anything, they've gone forward. So they're in their, in their rights to be extremely confident about the way that they're playing. Um, you know, it was a great win against the Thunder. Uh, under pressure to close out those games. So I'm sure they're taking a lot of confidence out of the way that they're finishing games. And, you know, Matt Short at the top of the innings uh, has been extremely dynamic. So they've got a lot of guys from one to seven in their batting order that can take games away from you. So we'll be wary of that. Um, in saying that, I think we're well covered across the board as well. Um, it's been an interesting lead up with, I think we had four or five states in five days. Travel, to be honest, is wearing a few blokes down, but it's been nice to maybe have a couple of days to refresh and come out to what be, might be our last game of the year. And if it is, it's, you know, at home, what a great place to play. If it is the last game of the year, mm. um, you've been in a bubble. Mm. <laughs> um, I guess it's not the worst thing to be able to resume normal activities. Yeah, I, I think we try and be as positive as possible. Uh, yeah, look, if it does end, I, I couldn't be prouder of this team and what they've done. You know, we finished second overall after a 14 game season with all the headaches, with all the changes that had come in. Um, so I'm really proud of where we finished. I think that's a fair reflection on us, on how we are as a side. and. Consistently over the last four years, you know, we, we lost by a couple of balls three years ago in a semi and then have gone back to back winnings and then finished second. So regardless of the result, I'll be extremely proud of the way that the team's performed. Um, uh, you know, ideally we'd love to make another final. I think the Scorchers and us have sort of got this um, you know, rivalry now, which has been going on for 11 years and it would be nice to be able to challenge them again um, with that finals pressure on both sides and see who can come out on top. Um, However, you know, if, if Adelaide were to win, I think they would be great contenders for the title as well. Have you given, like, is this potentially your last hurrah? Or you yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it's, it, I think it would be tough to come back next year. I haven't, you know, it'd be highly unlikely, but I mean, I'm going to leave it. You play for 20 years and speak to the people around me in my supportive network. So I think I'll just see how I'm going in November if I've regained the love and the bug for the game and play a bit of grade cricket. Um, and there's an opportunity here at the Sixers, uh, then potentially, but I, I, that's so far off and out of my sights at the moment, I think. Um, I'll go and have a couple of months off and have a good think about it. I'd love to stay connected in cricket somehow, but um, yeah, I think this one's probably taken a bit of a physical and mental toll 
uh, this year and I think it, at, at times it can wear you down to a point of where you're just probably not willing to do all the work that you used to do. So, um, you know, will my attitude change in six months? Probably not, but we'll, we'll wait and see. You must have given some thought to like every sportsman does, the chance to go out in the mine, it's in front of you. I mean, have you allowed yourself to think about what that moment might be like if you can get there? No, I, th I think it is just playing this season of Big Bash, regardless of where we finish up. Um, you know, you'd love a fairy tale, but you just don't get them. I, I certainly didn't get one with the Blues. Um, that came as a bit of a shock, but to Cricket New South Wales credit and the Sixers management, we've had these ongoing discussions and been extremely transparent. Um, and if it was the last game, I'd be extremely thankful and grateful of the way that they've communicated and handled it and had those conversations with me. They're not easy to have with players who finish up their careers, but I got full credit to the association. Um, as I said, if there's an opportunity and I want to play there might be a spot, but if there isn't, they've also said that there may not be. And I, I, I prefer that two-way and open and transparent conversations more than anything. And I think they've done a great job at it. So if this is my last game here, I'll be, you know, I feel like I've got everything out of my own personal career that I could have got. Um, be nice to get the three-peat and maybe end on that one. But if it's here in front of a home crowd, then so be it. I've, I've had an absolute ball playing this game and feel really privileged. Thoughts on no S. Smith available? Yeah, I've got plenty of thoughts on that. Um, uh, well, I don't want to get into trouble. Uh, it, I'd just say from the game's perspective, it's all been said, hasn't it? But it's just a shame that you've got a quality of him who will be sitting at home watching on the TV or he might even be down here helping us warm up and you can't even get him um, playing at the SCG. I think for the fans and the game's sake, it would be just a great bonus after what's been a really long year with COVID, rule changes, um, to have the likes or the quali world-class quality of someone like Steve Smith. And I, I, it would go all ways. I mean, if it was... Pat Cummins or Cameron Green who wanted to play for the Scorchers. We, we want those best players playing. Um, and if we could get them, you know, regardless of the rules that they've brought in two weeks ago, if you could get the world's best Australian cricketers back from Test cricket playing, I think the game would, would go a long way in improving and maintaining that integrity, which, you know, has sort of been lost this season. So it's disappointing to not have him. Um, I understand why, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're a product that's here for the fans and... I think in this case we've probably let him down a bit. Good on you, mate. Thanks for your time. Go well. Cheers. Thank you.